helpful to us and we must give whatever is they what they demand there should not be any reservation it is whatever knowledge is there it is for the whole humanity there is a lot of criticism now about this ayurvedic medicines containing heavy metal yes and the use of heavy metal which is very uh, harmful to health so that is that is correct heavy metals we use in siddha medicine and our understanding about biochemistry or by the metallurgy and chemistry far more advanced you may not believe from common salt mercury is prepared can you believe the science with chemistry i studied i am a chemist i cannot elucidate i have a comment on this uh. I am so glad a metallurgist said that like this. So that's, that's there is no I testimony required. I think Ajay uh, Gupta is being a uh, kind of disreputed by these uh, Western remarks. We must go to the metallurgy of uh, Siddha uh, branches of medicine. How they are prepared? They are completely you know, non-toxic. Non-toxic. Because the way we, have, for example, mercury, it has got six. Seven uh, sapta kanjugam. It has got seven sheaths which which envelop the power of the mercury. The first step of any Ayurvedic preparation, Siddha preparation. Ayurveda and Siddha, there, there there is no difference at all. Unfortunately, the Dravidians or Tamilians say it is their uh, original thing. It is not. All texts are all Ayurvedic basic texts are describing. this is the medicines also so called siddha this is mineral using of metals and minerals is common to ayurveda it is ayurvedic approach is ayurveda but one thing is there there, there are great siddhas ayurvedam was practiced in tamil nadu by great saints <coughs> only saints can prepare it properly they will alone will get the concentration it requires lot of skill so it is being set apart for them and they noxious gas are may produce they live in the forest not to disturb others when compared to the present uh, factories it is nothing one not a uh, half a kilogram of mercury is purified what is going to happen? but they were having abundant uh, precaution not to disturb people they live in isolated place and prepare the medicines so first is the, the samskara process we Use so many herb, herbs, and it is being made ambrosia. It is amrodhamam. It can treat, we can treat with mercury any disease. It is so powerful, so harmless. We can give for even infants that will never give rise to any harmful effect. If it is prepared in the wrong way, definitely it will be harmful. Mercury ion will destroy renal tubules. It may be fatal. There is a ward in Stanley Medical College, Chennai, for mercury toxicity. So many are dying because wrong preparation, wrong way of preparation. It is it requires so much patience, and it is expensive. Now, it may not they may not observe the restrictions and way of preparation. That that's why it is producing side effects. As such. according to the shastras if it is prepared it will never produce any harmful effect but it is uh, nowadays you can get lot of nice cattle dogs and you know books and you can say okay this and then this give shankar pushpi or give ramni or do this combination 
So this is actually spreading like wildfire, and you know you get this. This is harmful, harmful to society, harmful to the science. There is no proper study conducted. In this, when the proprietary medicine is prepared and sold, it must follow the modern parameters. All double blind study, statistical study, placebo study, everything must be done. When something is called, uh, going to be sold in the market, it, we must insist that all known parameters of modern pharmacy should be followed. Otherwise, it will be harmful because certain patients, certain persons, it may do harm. It is applicable to both the systems. Without discriminating the constitution of person to person, the medicines are applied. It may develop idiosyncratic reaction and fatal, uh, it will end in, fate, uh, end in death. It may prove fatal. This is applicable to Ayurveda also. There cannot be any difference of opinion as far as I am concerned. That must be scrupulously ana analyzed, then only it, it, it must be uh, allowed to market. Properly preparations. So on our campus you examined so many people who came to you. So do you find that there are some diseases which are kind of statistically more prevalent and therefore certain things should be done in our food habit or our uh, daily life which will be like there are many people suffering from hypertension, so is there any reason? Hypertension, many things are known. Increased electrolyte consumption, salt consumption, it will increase the pressure, in, in the osmotic pressure. So it must be avoided. The all known things we can, we, we have to accept. And certain things which modern med uh, Ayurveda can <laughs> contribute for uh, treatment of hypertension, that is lifestyle mod modification, the most important thing. And exercise. Most uh, important, the three stambha of health described in Ayurveda is basically food, sleep, and Brahmacharya and Abrahmacharya. What are there? Brahmacharya for people who are studying, and Abrahmacharya for Grahasthas. Proper indulgence in Shastra, according to Shastra, sex is <coughs> helpful for health. Overindulgence alone will be harmful. Most of the hypertensive patients, sexual aberrations will be there. Most, not all. A normal sexual behavior will heal many diseases. It is, it is a preventive also. But unfortunately, that is known, known to the present medical education. Sex is, uh, is a spot like or it is athletic feat. It is not. It is real transfer of love. If that is performed in that purity and elegance, it will it will always bestow health. So that is one of the stamba, tripod of health. Sex, the other one is ahara. Ahara is the food we take. Ahara shuddho, sattva shuddhi. What you want, what you want, intend to achieve in life, this must be in accordance with your food. A student and a hard working labor cannot take the same food. Food is also differentiated in sattva rajas tamoguna. For example, vitamin A, it is available, it is present in beetle leaf. It is present in carrots. It is present in uh, cod liver. According to Ayurveda, this Sattuguna Prathanam will be the beetle leaf. Rejogunam will be the carrot. Tamogunam is for cod liver, where killing is there. Whereas it cannot be seen, it is not exposed to sunlight. So sun, ultraviolet rays, very effective for killing bacteria. That's why anything exposed to sun is superior. It is free from bacteria. So the source from which we get vitamin A is the same. But depending on the source, the quality is given. Sattva, Rajoguna and Tamoguna is there. 
Our mind is basically, we have to elevate the sattva state, then our outcome also will be sattvic. So by modulating the food of the society, we can regulate the habits also. Ahara Sudho Sattva Shiddhi. Ahara according to Ayurveda, not only food, anything that enters you is Ahara. <coughs> All sensory input also will be accounted as Ahara. Ahara Sudho Sattva Shiddhi. For Ahara, so many prerequisites are described in the Shastras. At first, there we should not take viridhahara. However, nutritious the things used, when it is combined, it will be dangerous to health. For example, milk and this plantain, kadali, chiro, amitraha. These are declared enemies. Unfortunately, we use that. Palumparu. In our place also there. Milk and for sannyasins. Newly wedded couples, everybody is being given milk and food, planted. These are declared, explained enemies. Kadali, Chiro, Amitraha. They are not friendly. When two enemies, are, two enemies are made in their room, what will be the result? Yeah, milk conflicts and uh, banana. They use popular. milk, milk and conflict, milk and all trinathanyam are compatible. We can use. Trinathanya means that look like grass. Any cereal which is taken from grass like plants, it is compatible. Not with other things. All fruits, excepting mango and grape, milk should not be taken. With sweet mango and sweet grape, milk is compatible. All other fruits, all milkshakes you get, all are incompatible. Apple shake, papaya shake, all shakes are harmful. This uh, milk, uh, some salty things is also harmful. Uh, harmful. That is, we cannot take, it will spill. It uh, milk is basically a colloid. When you add some electrolyte, uh, immediately it will. Even, even milk having in a glass and having paratha on a Friday breakfast table. Uh, milk and paratha, there is some, it is wheat, we can take. Salt, it is not salty. It should not be salty. Okay. If you are then taking salty it, along with the milk, no. Salt and milk we cannot take. And uh, another thing, very important thing, dehi, mm -hmm. the curd. Curd. Doctors say that you have to use lot of curd. According to Ayurveda, curd curd should be taken in a very very restricted manner. And curd should not be taken in the night. Curd, buttermilk, all fermented things out of milk should not be taken the night. What is the reason specifically for cod should not be taken in the night? Mostly because it, uh, it contains living lactobacterium. Milk must contain uh, curd and uh, buttermilk to contain lactobacterium. When it is in a very uh, in a solid form, it will work in the, an acid medium. For example, immediately after food, you go to bed. That will be stagnant in the stomach. And uh, that stagnation, all the lactobacterium will be growing. It will produce so many uh, toxic substances. Then while you are mobile, this will go easily to in a more uh, conducive situation where this will die. <coughs> that may be the reason. Naktandu Dadivarjidam. Night you should not take dethi. Whereas all the buttermilk, same quantity of curd you are taking and equal quantity or double the quantity of water, then it is homogenized. That is equal to Amrutam. <coughs> 